Uh, hello everyone, so welcome to the uh, live streaming on Home Child Care Provider Pilot and the Home Support Worker Pilot Program. So this is live, it's a live streaming, I'm here right now in Canada, so it is around 7, 7 10 here. Okay. So your guest speaker is myself. Again, it's uh, my name is Israel Roman, and I'm a licensed Canadian immigration consultant and a practicing registered nurse as well here in Nanaimo, British Columbia. And we have our local office down there in the Philippines, which is it would be in Lipa City, Batangas, Philippines. So what is this home? Child Care Provider Pilot and Home Support Worker Pilot Program. So this is a new program that is uh, that is for <clears throat> for Canada. And so as of uh, June 18, 2019, as a caregiver, you may now apply for a not just an open work permit, but at the same time, a permanent residency application. So what are the requirements for this one? So obviously you need to meet the eligibility requirements and then have a job offer to work in in these two occupations. One would be the home child care provider which is as the uh, NOC 4411. And when we say home child care provider, this would be your nannies, okay? So I think every all of our viewers are Filipino. So I'll go ahead and present this one in Taglish so that it would be uh, easier for me to explain. And if there's any anyone in our viewers right now that's not able to understand Tagalog just let me know and I'll uh, I'll uh, have this presentation in, in in purely in English but yeah so so the uh, job of occupation would be home child care provider or the nanny and the other and as a nanny uh, experience as a foster parent is uh, doesn't count so only a nanny or a paid nanny services the other occupation would be your home support worker. So this one would be your caregiver or yung mga nag-aalaga ng matanda. But as a housekeeper, that one uh, housekeeper is not included on this home support worker. So, so kailangan lang is your offer, your job offer is either a nanny or a uh, support worker or caregiver for an elderly. So through this pilot program, so before before this pilot program, before June 18, 2019, our caregiver, they can come here as a worker, <clears throat> so with a work permit. And then once they're here as a work permit, they have to finish two years of working as a caregiver. And then after completing their two years of full-time caregiver occupation, doon pa lang sila pwede mag-apply for permanent residency. <clears throat> so for this one, for this program now that was implemented last June 2019 for five years, <clears throat> what the, the difference is that now when you apply for this one, you are getting two, you're submitting two applications at the same time. One is your open work permit, and then the other one is your permanent residency. So when you, essentially, when you get approved, you come here with an open work permit, and at the same time, you are tentatively approved to uh, for a permanent residency. Uh, you only have one requirement that you need to accomplish or fulfill, which is the your two-year resident, two-year occupation here. Once you have completed the, your two-year of occupation as a caregiver here, then uh, you'll get your official status as a permanent resident. 
So now, as I've said, it's an open work permit, meaning to say when you come here before, when you come here under the work permit, you'll see on your work permit that you can only work as a caregiver and at the same time only for that for that particular employer. Now with this new program, when you come here, he, it will only specify, it will only uh, say in your work permit that you can only work as a caregiver, but it doesn't say that you can only work for a particular employer. You can work for any employer as long as it is under, uh, as long as it is under the uh, caregiver occupation. <clears throat> so yeah, so is occupation res restricted? So yeah, so if you come here as a nanny, you can only work here as a nanny, but again, you can change employers. <clears throat> you can change employers without having to apply for a new work permit because you already have an open work permit. And your employer doesn't need to have a labor market impact assessment. So that is good news for the employers here. That's lesser lesser expense for them. And at the same time, it's now it's a uh, it's quicker, much more And lets you get to work experience you need to be eligible for the permanent residency. So yeah, so once you're here, again, once you're here on an open work permit, you just need to complete your two years of uh, working full-time as a caregiver. And then after completing that two years, then you can uh, get your official permanent residency status. So applying for a new work permit. So as of, again, as of June 18, 2019, we'll no longer process new work permits to work as an in-home caregiver if. So if you're applying for outside Canada, so what, so ang ibig sabihin lang nito is like when you're before, the in-home caregiver, before June 18, you're able to apply for a work permit but now, because of the new program, you cannot apply for a new work permit. It has to be the open work permit with the permit residency. And you cannot, you, you won't be able to apply anymore if you're applying to the uh, temporary foreign work program. And you'll be working outside Quebec. And your employer applied for LMIA on or before, on or after June 18. <clears throat> so... Again, as I've said, like so after June 18, so from now, five years, June 18, 2019, uh, up to five years, all new work permit for a caregiver, this is, the on, this is the only way that they can, that you guys can come here would be to apply for an open work permit at the same time, a permit residency. So, hindi na po pwede yung isang uh, di na po pwede yung work permit lang and then later on yung permanent residency it has to be both at the same time and you need to pass both requirements both for the uh, work permit and the other one would be for the uh, permanent residency and I'll tell you later on kung ano yung mga requirements for that one Which is now so eligibility for you for a care for someone to come here as a caregiver is again is to have a genuine and valid job offer. So your employer needs to fill out a form and and certify that they are a legit employer, that they have children that you will be looking after, or they have elderly or parents that you'll be looking after and at the same time that you have the necessary income to to pay the uh, caregiver or the nanny so f and the uh, employee and the employee needs to provide a full-time employment so which means it would be 30 hours per week so it cannot be below 30 hours so it has to be more than it has to be at least 30 hours to 40 hours per week to be considered full-time work and you're able to do the job so immigration officers would take a look on your qualifications see if you're really able to work as a nanny or a caregiver so if you are a 
manager for a restaurant then uh, and you don't have any caregiving, caregiving course or training then you won't be able you won't qualify for this one you'll be you'll get denied because you are they would see that one that's not that able to uh, do the do the job you might have yeah you might be a manager but it's not really for a caregiver or a nanny so you need to have a caregiving course training or equivalent so equivalent could be let's say you are a graduate a nursing graduate then that would be uh, something that, that would be equivalent for for this one you have to meet the uh, language level which means uh, your CLB or the benchmark would be for reading would be 4.0 and then the rest listening writing and speaking would be 5.0 so it's not that high so I don't think it would be a problem next one would be to meet the education requirement so this is essentially for <clears throat> the permanent residency ap application so in order to qualify for the permanent residency you need you need to have a post-secondary education of at least one year so college uh, first year college this one would be tricky because if you are if your high school is only up to grade 10 <clears throat> and then you took a two-year associate course when that one gets evaluated here that two-year associate course your college uh, course that would only be considered as your first year as your grade 11 and second year as your grade 12 so meaning to say so even if you think that hey i have a two years of college but because <clears throat> you didn't have grade 11 and grade 12 when that when your credentials get evaluated your first year would only be grade 11 and your second year would only be grade 12 so to be safe for it would be uh you need to have at least three years three years in college to in order to get that one year post-secondary next one is you are admissible to canada so no criminal offense and history of misrepresentation So what happens if you have a spouse and that spouse is uh, of course included in your application so your spouse will now get an open work permit as well but the difference between your open work permit and your spouse's open work permit is that your spouse's open work permit is, a, is really open as in there's no restriction to the work and employment and employer so your spouse can work anywhere and then for your dependent child, this would be a study permit for your dependent child. So how much is the uh, ongoing wage uh, right now or salary right now? So for a home support worker or the uh, caregiver, which is the NOC 4412, the median wage for that one here for Canada is $16.50. While as a nanny, the median wage is fourteen dollars and eleven cents, and you'll see the so the low and the high right there. So yeah, it could go as low as for the caregiver twelve point fifty, nanny eleven point thirty two, and it could go as high as twenty four fifty and twenty twenty dollars. <throat> so let's. Look at the wage sample computation. So how would that this one look like then? So let's just say that you are working $12 an hour for 40 hours. Sorry, that's the, missed the S on that one, 40 hours per week. That would give you $480 per week. So 40, $480 per week times four weeks per month, that would give you 1920 per month so 1920 per month times 12 months in a year that would give you 23,040 for a year so that's in Canadian dollars so 
for our Filipino viewers, if we convert that one to Philippine peso right now, 35, 35 peso is $1. So that would give you $806,000, $806,000 pesos per year. That would be your wage. And this is only at $12 an hour, right? So you can go ahead and do your computation if you say, okay, I'm getting, I'll be getting $15 or my employer is offering me $15. How much would I get? So there you go. So for the visa fees, so you have your application processing fee of 550 and then your your work permit application of 155 and then your open work permit holder fee would be $100 and then you have your biometrics as well which is 85 and then if you have your spouse I mean your dependent child then that would be 150 for your dependent child and then for your spouse, that would be another 550. So that's it for my, <clears throat> for this uh, short live stream for the uh, new program on how to get here in Canada as a caregiver. And yeah, if you have any questions, just go ahead and send us a message on uh, Facebook and uh, just uh, give us your email address as well and contact number so that we can uh, contact you or update you on our next live stream. <clears throat>